Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra and I'm so glad you're here. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, what are you waiting for? Click that red button. I'm going to start this project by painting this scrap piece of wood with some white. The back and the sides of it are stained with the antiquing wax. I'm gonna leave them the brown color because I like the rustic contrast between the white paint and the brown. I created this graphic on my computer and I used a eucalyptus background that I got from Creative Fabrica along with the other images that came from Pixabay, which is a website that has a ton of wonderful images that you can group together to create your own printables. However, I will have this one available on my website as a free printable for all of you. As you can see here, I'm using some water on a paintbrush and I'm just gonna go around the edges so I can tear this. I printed it off on regular computer paper, so it's a little bit on the thicker side. I just needed to add a little bit more water to make sure that I can just peel off the edges so it looks a little bit more rustic and weathered. To get the paper onto the wood, I'm using Mod Podge and I just decided this time to put the Mod Podge on the back of the paper. Now I'll just center it and press it down with my hands, making sure that I try to get out as many bubbles as I can. Although I'm not really too concerned about that, I do want this to look a little bit old and rustic, as I mentioned earlier. So once I go over it and maybe sand it down a bit, if some of the paper comes off, that's totally fine with me. I'm going to sand off all the excess paper and then I'm going to go over the paper edges themselves and sand some of that off. Again, rustic, weathered, old. This is the look I'm going for today. Since the back and the sides of this board are brown stained, I'm just putting a little bit of this rustic stain on a paper towel and I'm going to go around the edges and just bring in some of that color to the front too. That will also add to the more aged look of this piece. I decided to keep this more of a farmhouse look so I didn't add any bows or florals and I think it looks beautiful on its own. This project is still rustic, but it does have more of a French country flair to it. So I have some heat transfer vinyl that I cut out using my Cricut. And what I like to do is take my craft knife and cut the vinyl into sections. I'm not going through to the plastic underneath. This is a heat transfer vinyl that I'm using, but I just want to make it a little bit easier to weed out so I have smaller sections to work with. I'm also doing a rooster design for this one and you can see me here just very carefully trying to get out all of the little bits and pieces of this HTV transfer. I'm using my HTV Ron automatic heat press with a 15 by 15 inch surface. I love this machine and I wanted to share with you that HTV Ront is having a third anniversary celebration. There's going to be all sorts of discounts available for you, my viewers and subscribers. So make sure you go down to the description box and check out the link so you can see the different products that HTV Ront has available. While I wait for the press to warm up, I need it to get to 315 degrees for 40 seconds. That's what the Cricut Heat Press Guide recommends for heat transferring on 100% cotton. So in the meanwhile, I'm just gonna set up my fabric and my decal and make sure that I've got everything lined up the way I want it to be. What I love most about this heat press is that it's automatic and I don't have to worry about trying to get the right amount of pressure and evenly across my whole project. I also have a much larger space, 15 inches by 15 inches. So that really gives a lot of opportunity for larger projects. I'm just gonna wait now and let it do its thing. Once the time has run out, the top part will automatically lift and then I'll be able to take a look and see if my project is done. I had put in a Teflon sheet in between the 
press and my image. But with the heat transfer vinyl, you usually don't have to do that. That's just an extra precaution that I take. However, I did have to rerun the press one more time to make sure that my image was adhered to the fabric properly. Once the image has a chance to cool, then it's time to peel back the paper backing. I like to do it really slowly just to make sure that everything is stuck onto my fabric and nothing is peeling up onto the plastic. This is HTV Ront heat transfer vinyl. I really like this product as well as some of their regular vinyl products. Now it's time to add more of a French country look to this piece. I've got it on a pants hanger. This is an old one that I've had for many years. I think my mother gave it to me a long time ago. I'm going to also take this white yarn and create a few tassels. I'm going to take three of my fingers and wrap it around 10 times and then I'll take off the loop, tie off a little bit on the top and then cut the strands at the bottom. And then I'm going to take a comb and kind of comb them out. This yarn is really loose and it's really easy to be able to pull it apart and make it look a little bit more fringed, which I thought would be perfect for this. I love the way this fabric and my decal looks, but I thought it needed something a little bit down at the bottom to counteract the color and the weight of the design on the top. So I'm taking this piece of burlap ribbon that has some lace on it, and this comes from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to just glue the fabric underneath the little lace at the top there, and then I'll add a little bit more hot glue on the back where the burlap is and then just tuck in that top piece of fabric. This was a little finicky to do so be prepared that you might have to take a little bit of time to do this. You need some patience too which is really not up my alley but it did work out for me just fine. I played around with the placement of the tassels a little bit. At first I thought I would make enough tassels to completely cover the bottom, but then I thought that might be a little bit of overkill. So I'm just going to be gluing three of them, two on the outside and one in the center. And I'm putting the head of the tassel sort of right in the middle of where the lace ribbon is. So here I am making a messy bow again. I know that French country lends itself to messy bows because everything's sort of delicate and fringy. And so I just grabbed a few different pieces of fabric. I also cut down some ticking stripe ribbon and I've got some nautical rope that I took apart. And I'm just going to be placing all of my ribbons together and then I'll tie them off in a really tight knot with the twine that you can see underneath. Using hot glue, I'm going to attach it to the little clasp there at the bottom of the hanger portion, and I'm just going to hold the ribbon in place until the glue has a chance to set up. I had this gray ribbon that had this laurel pattern from the Dollar Tree, so I created a double loop two finger bow, and I'm going to glue that in the center of the messy bow. Then I decided to accent some of the lace down at the bottom in between the tassels with some of that gray ribbon as well. And I think it just brought the whole piece together. For a final touch, I added some bits of greenery into the ribbon. And I think this turned out really pretty. I think it has a rustic French country farmhouse feel to it and I hope you love it as much as I do. This project is using another piece of scrap wood that I've cut into a really tall breadboard design and I'm going to take it outside and give it a coat of primer. That's just going to help block out any of the stains that might come through because this is a pressure treated piece of wood. I'm now going to give it a coat of white chalk paint just because it just looks better when it has a little bit of brush strokes on it. 
The transfer or tissue paper print that I'm going to be using for this project came from the Graphics Fairy website. I thought it was the perfect size for my breadboard, so again, I'm just going to be using Mod Podge to apply it. If you are curious how to print on tissue paper, I have a link down in my description box for a tutorial that focuses on all the steps you need to do to print images on tissue paper. I love doing this because the tissue paper, especially the white, blends right into the background and you don't even notice that it's there. This is a really inexpensive way to get a high-end look on your projects. Once it's dry, I'm going to be using my sanding block to just bring back some of the wood around the edges, distress the paint a little bit, and I'm also going to use it on the top part of the board as well, even a little bit inside the tissue paper. I want it to have a little bit of a distressed look. I want it to look like it's been sitting around for a while and it's the label has started to wear off. I found this cast iron butterfly hook in my stash of stuff and I thought it would be a really fun addition to this piece and they could always then hang some florals or something on it but unfortunately when I continued screwing this in and I got to the next screw the hook just popped right off this is literally an iron piece I have no idea how that would have happened but it did so I had to just remove the screws and push the butterfly down a little bit further now, since the piece at the top was just a plain butterfly, I decided to grab one of these handles. I got these at a thrift store. I think there's about 20 or 25 of them in the bag. They're pretty ugly. They're pretty junky and dirty, but I cleaned it up and I'm going to give it a couple of coats of black chalk paint. And I thought this would look really neat down at the bottom of this board. I'm just going to use some Gorilla Glue Clear Grip to apply the handle to the board. And I think this piece turned out really unique. It has a little bit of a quirkiness to it. It's rustic. It's French country. I just love it. I love finding odd sized rolling pins at the thrift store and this one I had already given some buffalo check handles to but I'm going to replace that now with just solid black. It'll just get a couple of coats on each side. I went back to my Cricut and used some of the HTV Rant permanent vinyl. This is a matte finish in black and cut out a design for the rolling pin and now I'm just going to go ahead and weed it up. Again, I'm using my craft knife just to cut the vinyl into more manageable pieces, especially with this one. There's a lot of small little bits and pieces to it. This is the design I created and it will be available as a free printable on my website. Now I'm taking some paper transfer tape and I'm going to use a squeegee on the back of it, just making sure that it's all pressed down. So once I turn it over, I can very easily peel off the decal with the transfer tape. I'm going to center the decal on the rolling pin and then just press it down using the squeegee one more time, just making sure that all of the vinyl has adhered to the rolling pin. I did clean the rolling pin with some alcohol ahead of time to make sure that I there was no grease or fingerprints on it that would prevent the decal from sticking properly. To give the rolling pin more of a rustic look too, I'm going to take some antiquing wax on a paper towel and I'm just going to rub it into the rolling pin, making sure that I get some darker spots and lighter spots. I want it to look really aged and weathered and that it's been loved for a really long time. To add a little bit of French country to the rolling pin, I cut off some strips of drop cloth fabric. I'm just going to tie them in a knot. I have three of them and I'm just going to overlap them. And then I'm going to add one solo wood flower. And I think this just gives it a rustic farmhouse French country look.
I found this hanging basket at my local Dollarama store for $5. It's actually a metal tin, but it has a flat back on it. So it would be perfect to hang on the wall with decor, maybe even out in the garden as well. But I'm going to create some rustic French country look with this. I'm taking my rooster picture again, and this time I printed it off on some vintage background paper that has little faint script on it. So this will also be available as a free printable on my website. I decided to leave the bucket the color it was. I thought it was perfect. It's rustic, it's farmhouse, but I'm going to add some French country flair to it. So I cut the rooster image out in a circle and I'll use Mod Podge to apply it. I'm going to use a really stiff chip brush and some of this mushroom colored chalk paint and just very lightly go over the front portion of the bucket, giving it a little bit of a distressed look, but not covering it too much that you don't see that beautiful color underneath. I also wanted to change up the hanger from just a plain rope. So I'm taking some twine and feeding through a couple of different styles of beads. I have a round one and then I have an oval one that has some grooves in it. And I thought this would just give the hanger a little bit of extra texture. So I'm just going to go ahead and add all of the beads that I need. I'm going to tie it on using the original holes that were there, which you won't see once you have decor in it. And then I'll just add a little bit of hot glue to the knot to hold it in place. I think this would look gorgeous with some florals in it, but also maybe some utensils, some garden shovels and things, maybe some towels in a bathroom. There's endless possibilities to this project. I hope you enjoyed these rustic French country farmhouse projects today. I really enjoyed creating them for you. Please make sure you do all the things, hit the like button, the subscribe, and the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything else I have to share. Wishing all of you a happy Easter weekend. See you in the next one.